everyone hope you're all okay and we both hope that you're enjoying our daily short um, videos in last week's video it's amazing um i showed you an item that um, buddha bought me in banyol's um, bracot antiques fair um i actually showed you it and i asked all the um, subscribers to put in the comments what they thought it was now i've done quite a bit of homework and I've actually found out, if I show you up close, that this item actually is a Victorian sort of slash Art Nouveau, um, so I would say from the 20th century um, bread fork. Now, what actually brought me to this conclusion as well, if you look at the front, you can obviously see these prongs have a sharp point but when I turn it over they're actually on fork. a slant yeah. on a slant like a fork now you would probably think to yourself well the pig being on the front that that could be a meat fork mm -hmm. but for me I think the prongs are too short and from my memory obviously of a child my grandmother had a meat fork and the prongs were very sharp so you could obviously put the fork into it now this goat dates back to a time when it was very improper to actually hand handle the food without it being actually on your plate do you understand so it, 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 it would be put on your plate you couldn't just grab food it wasn't sort of the things to do so i would like to say a big thank you to tracy brown and lily lilybet mills i hope i've pronounced this because i think this is your username properly for guessing what this item is well done but i would like to say if i just show you it's quite heavy isn't it's it? quite heavy so I'd never make her hair i could never this is the first thing that came to my mind i thought oh that would make a lovely hair clip but obviously because of the weight it's not going to be feasible no. so i hope you enjoyed that and thank well, no, you Tracy, that was a good little uh, tester for everyone i think yep what do you what do you think i think it was really good and we'll yeah. have more in the future <laughs> won't we it's a nice little object though isn't it yes it is very nice and at the back it has a marking on it uh see if i can see which translates to 
silver metal basically oh, okay but it's quite ornate as well isn't it but yeah, if this very. was lighter this would be perfect and i would definitely be using it as a hair clip fantastic well thank you for that trace that's okay okay welcome back right so i've cut the arch on the head now yeah it's a very subtle arch but it's done it fits the frame fitted this whole door in now now we're up to her hinging and you can see here maybe i've set my marking lines out which is the width of my hinge okay and the hinge is going to come on the inside same with that one up there same with that one there we're going to have three butt hinges we call these butt hinges uh, i'll give you some uh hinge terminology if you like okay so this is your hinge obvious this is a heavy brass butt hinge it's a big big hinge okay four inch or 100 mil roughly and in between in between the uh the joint uh the butts if you like the uh where they go through the tube there's a steel bar goes through the center here and then in between them there's a washer on each one and then washers uh bronze washers and uh they give it a very very long last ability and it lasts a long time okay we call this the leaf side and we call this the butt side of the hinge the leaf side which you'll see a little split there that's the leaf side there that goes on the the door so you're putting a door on or a window or uh whatever it's always your leaf side goes on the opening bit and this goes on the fixed bit this side the butt side all right and then when you set up your uh, marking gauge some fellas set to the center of the butt but i don't like my butt to be in the wood too much so i always set to the width of the leaf which is that way sorry i'll just uh turn you around there so i set to the width of the back of the leaf all right and then coming over here then i'll show you on here that goes in there i've already done that mark little trick though when you're doing these uh setting out if you're ever doing a setting out hinge guys or ladies as well um on your furthest line away from you push a little uh prick into the line at the end of the line so when you push your marking gauge through it stops it always stops at the line okay it's a good little tip to learn and a good way to keep doing when you're using marking gauges at all all right save so you're going pushing right through and making big long lines you don't need to have going into the timber if you're keeping it nice and tidy um it's a better way to work and then the other the other gauge uh, which is here this is the other marking gauge okay that's set to the thickness of the leaf okay so that's that thickness of the leaf and then that if i can show you somehow it goes that way and i mark doing exactly the same procedure and that will give me the, the depth of the hinge going down into the door and the other one will give me the width of the hinge going into the door and then i'll repeat that onto the door frame and there we go um so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna mark and chop these out and then i'm gonna turn the door onto the table and do a bit of glazing i just want to talk to you about a bit of putty and how i make putty and what you need to make putty this is a trade secret i'm giving you here by the way so uh take note
when you're doing that back cut there like that don't go down too hard because you don't want to split the back out at all it's a possibility it can happen sometimes um, so I'm just following my lines I've got now okay so I'm going to chop in uh, the line. hopefully the uh, camera ain't banging about too much you can see this Okay. And remember, this is oak, so it's really hard. It's hard to work through. Um, it's going to clean down a little bit more. Believe me. This chisel is sharp, but this oak is really hard, it's brown oak, okay? And we just work our way through the oak. Um, it's the bit you've got to be really careful with. Don't try and take too much. And notice my hand where my finger is, and the chisel is pointing over there, okay? And I'm keeping my thumb down on that chisel. Okay, if it does slip out, it's going to go like that. That's a very important factor there. If you're chiseling, keep your thumb on it, keep control, and keep don't go like that. Keep it like that. And that nice sharp chisel will clear it out. Basically, that's it. It should be a nice fit. So not too bad a bit. A slightly loose. I'll show you one over here. Just here, okay. So they should fit. I think this one's a tight one. Yeah, that's it. Uh, need a little bit of a. Ah, uh, there we go. Just get that in there. Okay. So what you see is the back edge of this hinge is flush here. But as you go down there, it's just slightly tipping in on the back, which is the same as this one over here that I've just done. Just slightly tipping back. Oh, you can't see that, so you understand. Yeah, but anyway, and that's how your hinges go on. This is the butt side, remember, and this is the leaf side. Okay. Okay, just show you putting the hinge on. So, making sure the leaf side goes on the door. Okay. Get that into its position. Okay, that's in there, a little bit lower at the back, which we want. And then I have a centering tool, a little bit, which is the right size for the screws. Now, against my better judgment, I have to use these uh, Phillip heads or star shaped ones because I don't have any brass slotted heads for these. I uh, can't find them. Well, I have got them, but I don't know where they are in all this uh, mess we got here. So, I'm going to put these in temporary, but I don't know if you remember back about a year or so ago, I was talking about uh, using lubricants on the screws, which is very important in oak okay and hardwoods so this is tallow same stuff i use in the uh, lime mixes and things for doing lime mixes i literally put that in there and same with all of them so i'll just just quickly do these now okay get them started a bit more on there don't be scared to put plenty on the uh, screw thread okay so what happens is that allows this to uh, go in nice and easy okay there's no effort there okay that's pulled down nice and flush do them all
Oh. Hit the strike. A little fluff. Wipe the tallow off. Squeeze this out. Now they'll be changed when I get the other one. I find the other screws. But the reason I can change them is that I've put tallow on them. Okay, so they come out nice and easy. I'm going to put a tiny bit of tallow back on that again to go down. Okay. Now, if you don't believe me, go and, bit, go and get a bit of scrap oak. Put one of those type of screws in it without no tallow and see what happens. Whether it goes in all the way, you'll be lucky. And if it does, getting it out, you'll probably smash all this head up and you'll, you'll damage it probably slipping about now okay so anyway so that's leaf side butt side leaf on the door remember leaf on the door butt side okay so i'm going to carry on finish up one i've got this one done over here uh you can see just going to do the last one now which is here if you can see okay folks all the hinges are on it doesn't actually take long it's uh stopping and starting on the filming makes it feel like it's a little bit longer but don't take long but i just want to show you how i kept that door i'll put it up on the bench for now but how i kept that door in that upright position like that i made these years and years ago these blocks i just can't remember how many years it must have been 20 odd years ago i made these and uh i've just made some wedges with a cut out here and i'll knock one out and show you um get a hammer so if i tap this See the hint? Oh, let's pick that up. So basically, sorry about the filming. I cut a wedge out and always cut a two inch, two inch depth plus this wedge, all right? And then all I do is I lock it in there. I've got two of them, each end of the door. So if you're doing a lot of doors, it's a good little bit of kit to have. No one here. Um, and it'll hold doors up for you and windows sashes if you're doing some and say i don't know something like the big giant um uh chateau windows as such you know because they are quite tall some of them even though they're very simple in their structure they're uh, they're quite tall and they need to be held so this would be ideal for that situation but anyway so tune in tomorrow and uh we'll show we'll talk about puttying and glazing uh, and how I make up a putty the colour of the, uh, the, the uh, oak. 